Hail Internet! It's Paul, it's Matt, the Dork Lords. We are here talking about episodes 9 and 10 of Castle Rock. Yes, down to Castle Rock. Down, down to Castle, Castle Rock. Rock. <laughs> Last time. Yeah, uh, probably. Probably. <laughs> oh man, uh, best show. Castle Fraggle Rock. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, episode 9 entitled Henry Deaver. Yes. Episode 10, entitled ten, ten. Romans, Friends, Country Romans, me. Countrymen. L- me Indeed. <laughs> Chopped them off, handled around. Um, okay. So, yeah, episode 9, a uh, very uh, instructive episode. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> I will talk about it. Okay. So, um, episode 9 begins, we're not going to... Do a complete recap. No. But I'll just say, like, it begins with a voiceover from Pastor Deaver in World One. We'll say the, uh, the our world, the Prime from, World. Damn it! Don't say that. <laughs> Counterpart. <laughs> damn it's you! It's all in his head. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so our world's Pastor Deaver. Uh, is, well, I I assume it's our world's Pastor Deaver. Actually, I guess it might not be. Anyway. I think it is. All right. Anyway, now that I've mentioned that, hey, Pastor Deaver is talking about, hey, um, one of the things that's kind of important for later is that he mentions, uh, you know, people say, hey, it's this place that made me go crazy. Yes. And maybe it is. Yeah, maybe. Kind of says that. Whereas, if we'll just flash forward to the end of the episode 10, we hear a voiceover from Henry Deaver. Yes. And he's saying, you know, people say maybe it's the place that made me do this. Really, if the monster's inside of us, it just maybe accentuates mm. it, but the monster has to be there first. Mm. It's kind okay. of his Interesting. his point of view. So he's different from his dad. Sure, of course. Um, but the, during this voiceover, we see uh, this bit, uh, Pastor Deaver talks about, hey, when I was a kid, my mom told me that she tried to kill me. Tried to kill me with a hanger. And uh, I didn't die. And so I was like born again kind of thing. Mm. And so it kind of maybe led to his interest in religion. I don't know. Anyway, but that was just kind of an interesting little sideline where we're like, was sure. he immortal? Did, did he? Did, did she just not? Could she not do the act? I mean, who knows how he right. didn't? They they can't explain. No, that, they never did. Somehow, little kid him stayed with it. And that was also a very disturbing scene. Yes. Uh, but uh, okay. So, um, and then episode nine ends. After this, we'll talk about the story that uh, the kid is tell, told. But he asks Molly, hey, do you believe me? And she's like, uh, uh, uh. And then in episode, beginning of episode 10, same question comes about. And she's like, I want to. Which is not a yes. No. Okay, so the story the kid tells is essentially episode 9. I mean, there's some other stuff that happens in episode 9. But the bulk of it is kid is a well-adjusted doctor guy living yep. in this alternate dimension. N- named? Henry Deaver. Yes. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> we do know that, and it comes into play in episode 10, uh, there was a Henry, De- well, I mean, obviously his name wasn't Henry. It was just a Deaver. A little baby Deaver was born and died in infancy. And so... That was what, remember when uh, the kid was like, have uh, Henry meet me at the Harmony Hill Cemetery. I have something to show him. Well, the thing he's standing in front of is the the tombstone of Boy Deaver. Oh, yes, 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 yes. So, in other words, if you go with the alternate dimension theory, the idea was that was the version of Henry in this uh, this alternate uh, dimension. Okay, anyway, so in this alternate dimension... Hey, I'm a doctor. I can cure uh, Alzheimer's. I'm pretty. I'm getting on. I'm close. I got a wife. Mm. She's pregnant. We're gonna have a kid. Everything's coming up roses. <laughs> Everything's coming up, Henry. Um, in that world, uh, Ruth decided to leave. Yes, she didn't pack her bags and actually left. That's true. And she took she the kid with her. Took the kid away. She is now living in Florida happily with Alan Pangborn, the White Henry. The white, <laughs> the kid. Uh, we did not see uh, the black Henry in no, the alternate. No, I mean, not that that version of it. Correct. Yeah. Yes. The alternate version of him. The alternate. 
So in that alternate world, World 2, uh, Pastor Deaver, everybody left him. So he didn't end up falling off a cliff and dying, you know, at that time when Lou Henry was a little. He, years later, shot himself in the head in the fort at Castle Lake. Um, so the kid is sent to look after the, the house and collect the affairs. Yes. When he goes down the basement, boom, oh my God. It's Henry Deaver from World One hanging out in the cage, much like the kid was in Henry the cage. Henry Prime. <laughs> You're gonna do this, aren't you? Uh, okay. Um, uh, much like the cage that the First kid was Henry. in in World One. Yes. Uh, in this case, it is in Deaver's house as opposed to in Shawshank Prison. Yes. Um, so. Facilitates a whole thing of the oh we gotta you know get who is this kid and we gotta take him yep. uh, get him help and then yep. uh, interestingly the kid is also sent to Juniper Hills I think and then there's a fire there like right. bad things happen which may it, the implication is caused by Henry's presence yeah. Um, and he's freaked out. He's well. He's been in a cage forever, just like uh, the kid was. For right. uh, you know, and he has light sensitive, and they can give him sunglasses. Molly touches his hand and kind of sees all this uh, backstory, to, and like believes the kid because like, oh my god, you're from this other place. Uh, uh, and he's like, we got to get to the woods. Um, they decide, yep. Well, Molly makes a decision. We're taking you to the woods. Yes. And so they take him to the woods. Uh, the you know the sound is happening. There's yes. a portal opening. Yes. We see all these different uh, people from around you know different ages. Yes. You know like oh the old the old French trapper cannibal girl <laughs> and some prisoners escaping from Shawshank probably from the 50s or 60s or something um, and they're all in this portal. So it's kind of a timeless portal area right. thing. Sure. And uh, the alternate version of Zalewski is. Trying to stop them, and he shoots up in the air, but doesn't shoot in the air. <laughs> Somehow it's like, <laughs> and he kills Molly, alternate Molly. She she's dying, and her dying breath. She's telling the kid, you know, help him, help Henry, so the he, bombardier, help so, the bombardier. So so he goes to help Henry, and whoop, ends up in World One. It's snowy. Uh, he's like, what the hell's going on? He kind of stumbles around. He sees little kid Henry get rescued by Alan Pangborn on the ice. And he uh, it says that he basically wandered around for days mm. before getting picked up by Warden Lacey and stuck in a trunk and then into a prison. And so that's his story. And he's like, do you believe me? And the Molly's like, mm, man... Me, um, so flash forward then into episode 10, the finale, yes, which we predicted was going to lead to this idea of getting the kid back. Wrong, 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 we were wrong, wrong. The alternate world <laughs> is never <laughs> invoked mentioned, again. invoked again, yeah. or maybe it's in mentioned but not shown, yeah. Yeah, he did say he's trying to get back. Let me get right, back. Let right. me get back. So everything will be fixed. Yeah. Okay. So in this one, the I guess the ultimate resolution of it is that Henry decides, you know what? Warden Lacey was right. You're the devil, and I'm gonna be your new jailer. Yes. And so uh, we I end. think motivated strongly by the fact that he sees that his son has returned and that he is affected by the sound. So I think he's probably like, okay, yes, I will take on the responsibility of jailing just so my son can be saved. Okay. All right. I uh, think the son is the most important factor in that. I, I thought so. maybe the important factor was first being in part of that jail riot and seeing the keys slide over and he's like you did this 
uh, to the kid, and then the and then when he sees the kid's face, which looks very demonic, in the woods. Yes, I thought that was the moment where he's like, "Oh, this actually is the devil." As opposed, I mean, and you're right. I mean, he could also have the implication of, "Oh, I want to save my son," but I think he's like, "I'm looking out. I'm Jalen the devil." <laughs> um, and so, yeah. So the last beat we have is he. It's a year later. I don't know if the town's better or not. We'll assume the town's better People off. look happier, People but that may be... So the stuff, jail's you know. closed, but he still sneaks through the fence, goes back to the same water cistern where they were keeping the... Uh, Warden Lacey was, keep, Lacey was keeping the, the kid before. Gives him a little... This Wonder Bread. Yes. Uh, where does he go to the bathroom? I don't know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and wishes him a Merry Christmas. And... As he's leaving, you know, the the kid's like, oh, you know, Warden Lacey. Yes. You know, look what happened to him. Yeah. It could happen to you, too. Yeah, he said the same things that you did. Yeah. And uh, that, whatever. Goes his, away. And, and then, then we see the smile on his face. Has a e- Norman Bates smile. E- you know. Um, like, oh, just sh- stay there quietly. So mm-hmm. we also learn that um, uh, Ruth died she dies off screen we didn't see how she died necessarily no. uh, but she is buried with Alan Pangborn which is a nice touch yes uh, Molly moved to Florida to be a real estate agent just got out of Castle Rock essentially um, Wendell we see him playing chess with his dad so I don't think he lives there but he came to visit his dad I think so, for yeah. Christmas I think so I think it's the way that works uh, we also have this uh we, we mentioned there might be an end credit sting thing, and there was. Uh, it's Jackie Torrance. Uh, she is writing her book called Overlooked. Uh, it's a clever title. Um, and she says, uh, oh, I'm going to travel back to the Overlook Hotel to finish this book. It's good to finish it where it started. And that's kind of the ending beat. Mm-hmm. I did notice, uh, I, had, I looked this up because I figured it was important. Um, on her laptop, she's got a decal, mm-hmm. WKIT radio. Yeah, I looked it up. That's a radio station in the uh, Northeast owned by Stephen King. Oh, it's Stephen King's oh, radio he's station. Log rolling himself. Yeah. Oh. Um, so, so I mean, there's an implication there that maybe the next because this they've been they've said it's an anthology. Right. Theoretically, this is the last beat. Other than maybe mentioning it at some point, we'll might see this, these. The Deavers will not be the main characters, unless maybe Wendell will, but Henry Deaver right. probably is not a main character in the next I season. I don't predict that to be the case. So maybe it's a Jackie Torrance thing. Although, I don't know, it seems a little on the nose for her to go back to the Overlook and be like, oh, I'm freaking out at the Overlook. <laughs> oh, okay. But, maybe. Uh, nothing happens uh, at the Overlook. And then, yeah. you know, on the way home, all right. She's like, oh, let me stop at this. Only a, Maybe she moves the Overlook this motel. to Castle Rock. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, um, but that was kind of the end beat. Like, oh, okay, there's, there's more happening. Um, okay, so assuming this is the end of this story, and that we don't have like yes another season that explains more. Yes. Uh, what are your What are your thoughts then, sir, on how this resolved itself? So, I mean, I feel like uh, that's the way horror stories seem to um, resolve themselves. Like, typically, what you have is. Um, established some force and there was some question as to what uh, the purpose of it of this force is you know and that's why the previous episode the nine episode where it was like no oh, I'm just a guy trying to get to my home I'm not trying to do anything shady um, and by the final episode his doubt is cast on that you know perhaps they don't want us to know whether or not he's uh, really uh, Henry from another world or, or whatever but you know certainly at the very end with them smiling it su- suggests that you know perhaps he's just the destruction that's happening in the town that people are imagining is because of him he's happy with it um, so you know just sort of like okay in the in the you know uh, in horror films and and you know stuff like this it's like what's the sort of dark force that's beneath the surface and you know while um henry was i guess by the end he you know he seemed okay with it wasn't as 
driven. He was still doing the same thing, helping out clients that needed help or whatever. And he definitely looked like he had a better relationship with his son. Yes. Um, you know, and he seems okay with the fact that his mom died, and you know, perhaps he's you know, but um, he's standing at her grave. With yeah, flowers. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they set up this sort of thing where it's like. You know, you always need somebody to do that job. You always need somebody to sort of keep real evil bottled up. And so that's the thing in the concept in these shows is that the evil and they're tangible, you know, they're creatures, things that you have to deal with as opposed to just, you know, a more emotionally, more complexly, you could say a lot of some other dramas might do it. So the fact you have the supernatural force that, you know, people have to be aware of and cautious of is standard for horror films I feel. Uh, one one note I should mention is the one mystery revealed as far as we know it was revealed or was it all in his head uh, <laughs> that Henry was the one who pushed his dad off yes. of the cliff. Yes. Cuz his dad said uh, I'm going to I'm going to kill your mom. Yep. She she's been unfaithful and as in Romans title of the episode drink <laughs> um, the wages of sin is death. Uh, yeah. uh, and so he's uh, he's gonna keep, so he mentions that to the kid out in the woods. The kid runs away. Mm. When he goes after the kid, the kid does the uh, the Danny Torrance. He backs oh. up <laughs> in the steps. So that was a, obviously a Shining reference. I had forgotten about that. And then you know at the edge of the cliff, so the dad comes to the edge of the cliff, like where are you? Whoop! Pushes him off. Doesn't kill him. Just horribly cripples him. <laughs> uh, puts him on life support and then uh, Molly finishes the job yeah. later. Thanks, Molly. Yeah, yeah good job. Um, so, okay, so I, I feel like there's two possible ways that this resolution could explain the majority of what we've seen. I don't think either of these, the thing I'm about to say, actually explains every clue or false lead that we've seen through the show. But one... No, the first thing was what we were talking about, which is basically that episode nine is a lie. Hmm. That the kid is just the devil. Yep, I mean, He's called the devil many times by many different people. Lying devil. Uh, and then he's a devil. He, he, may, he put these thoughts into uh, Henry's head. And this whole idea of the kid being this really nice guy from another place is, is BS. Um, if that's true, it feels... It feels almost like the rest of the show was almost a waste of time. <laughs> they were just spinning wheels. Like. I feel like, um, I mean, it's only one episode where we have that other alternate sort That's of true. explanation, you know, so. So we have, well, yeah, you're right. Ruth is jumping through time, but we never yeah. see her necessarily jumping through an alternate time. Nope. Okay. And um, I don't know. I, uh, I think you could argue that um, uh, Henry's repression of the, f the act of killing his father um, is, you know, causing him to be un unhappy until he, you know, realizes that he's not to blame for that. Uh, yeah, I mean, yes, you're, you're, you're talking about mom. trying to answer some of the questions based on the idea that the kid is just the devil and that there's not an alternate. Like, for instance, why didn't he freeze? Well, you're saying, Maybe he was just being held by that you're saying, Desjardins You guy seem to be saying that it was a waste. Oh, okay. And I'm saying that, you know, his character achieved something. He learned something as a result of of the having it, you know, because obviously he, that's a terrible act for someone to have to, you know, unless someone is crazy. And even if you're like, okay, I'm trying to protect my mom. Killing the dead. Killing the dead is still pretty traumatic. Um, so it's understandable that he might repress that memory. And so he was able to come to terms with that, at, you know. Okay. All right. All right. So I, that's you know, the benefit of the rest of part of the show. Um, the other explanation which is a little more supernaturally sci-fi. Okay. Uh, requires maybe another step or two. Would be let's just let's we'll say that alternate world does exist. Uh, the kid. Everything happens the way he said. Okay. Episode nine happened. Mm. He's back in this world, but because. You know, we've seen that uh, when Henry was in the other world, in, in the alternate world, he didn't age. Right. When uh, our guy, the Henry. kid, is in this world, oh, he doesn't right. age. Right. 
So somehow being out of your own world makes you, I don't say immortal, but makes you different in some way. Like you are maybe a ageless, you, you are stuck in time. I don't know what the, what the verbiage is. If it's true, is. yeah. Uh, maybe then that, uh, the kid became a target for a malevolent spirit who possessed him. Hmm. So then in that case, you could still have Henry, or the kid was essentially a good guy hmm. who is now possessed. Also, that would be the image that was seen is the spirit possessing wow. the kid. Okay. I know. I mean, I'm just saying it's a possibility that, you know, he might, he might become a target for, and, you know, that there is a portal. There is this area um, that uh, it happens to be Castle Rock is this, you know, I don't know. I mean, between throughout the, the uh, show, I feel like because um, he's evil. I mean, he, he does enough evil things yeah. that we're like, he's either evil or possessed. <laughs> I feel sure. like that's really the only yeah, options. No. Not misunderstood. Right? Like, oh no! You know, he just killed all those the kid? people. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's so. That's my thought is that maybe he's possessed, and that either possessed, maybe the devil, maybe it's a spirit that we call the devil. I don't right. know. But, um, and to the only, my, my thought though is <laughs> I mean if that's the case then I don't think it was clear then that suggests that they need to do a season 2 with some of the same characters there oh okay in I mean, what way what would they do in season 2 they clarify that oh it's a demonic spirit we can get it out of him or I don't know I'm just thinking to myself if that's is true and I again I don't I'm just I'm, I'm trying to throw out something that makes episode 9 actually <laughs> meaningful <laughs> Um, no. <laughs> if it's true, and that spirit, whatever this demonic spirit that's inside of uh, yes. the kid is, yes, wants to get back, yes, let him go. <laughs> yes, like oh, let's we have to go to the woods. Okay. Yes. I have to leave now. Great. Yeah. Okay. See ya. How does that explain <laughs> uh, that what he sees? Henry sees him on. He looks does not look human at all. Right. I'm saying because they're in this portal area. Henry, Henry's got the he's doing the like ah my ears right. yeah maybe because he's sensitive to the portal itself and that maybe being in that area he can see like the true form of things mm. and then see so he sees in because he also he doesn't see the demonic form the whole time no he sees it for like yes two seconds right and it's like and he's back to the kid so I'm just thinking maybe he kind of saw through the shell okay Temporarily, yeah. That's that one, yeah. And then, uh, but what's the importance of that? And then, how can the him being from the other world be true then? Well, just because he, he lived his life, he was like da, 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 got to this portal. When he came over, another creature hitched a ride on him, basically, uh, when, because the portal leads to all these different. Oh, realities. you don't think it's actually it's like this some spirit that's just okay? So you think he's possessed? I think you, I, suggesting I'm suggesting possibly. a possibility that he's possessed. Um, I don't know. It's just because he's so like, why is he willing to be captured? Well, because he can escape at will. <laughs> but can he? Yeah. I mean, he doesn't mind he just sitting there. He did. He was, I guess if time has no you meaning, know, as to long you. as they put other people in there and they can make him fight, yeah. he can get out. But there I mean, in go. terms of like getting stuck in the cage, where he's just got the one jailer. Oh right. And 27 years go by. Right, you think he'd be like? I don't, I don't well, know, I mean, as I was telling you, you know, he's taking wait. a chance uh, that um, he can't uh, when Henry dies, and that's it, right? Because you know, typically, what I mean, right now, he doesn't tell anybody because it would sound crazy, and they would just let him go, and then all the problems would happen. So, you know, one thing that was kind of implied by uh, the minister. Um, I feel as if, uh, you know, the whole thing about we must be the jailer for the for the for the devil. Okay. If it's not that, you know, yeah, they just postponed the inevitable. I think it's more likely that you know. I mean, yeah, the fact that he seems okay with it, like, oh, okay, he you know, uh, the kid. Yeah. Oh, you're gonna. Oh, oh, that's what they all say. That's what the guy said before. Yeah, I. It's hard to rectify. You know how did how did uh, Henry even subdue him? Really, right? If he's an all powerful spirit, 
Be like, why did the guy, why did the kid need a gun? Why does he have to be all, you know, all powerful, though? Okay. Well, he just kind of seems all powerful at times. Yeah. I'll command this entire room of people to kill right. themselves. Right. And then throw me the keys to the jail. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll walk out. And you're like, whoa, okay. <laughs> That's pretty powerful. Uh, I will, uh, well, we think he basically mind controlled uh, the the warden to the like, mouse. Commit, commit suicide. Mind controlled the mouse. Yes. Mind controlled Zalewski. Yes. Go shoot everybody. Yes. Uh, mind controlled the little family having a birthday party. Yes. To kill their kids. Yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of bad things. I mean, he kind of set up the situation where Ruth would shoot So he's evil. Love. I mean, evil. yes. I mean, you know, to me, <laughs> I like, I mean, I should, well, I don't prefer, like, as we were talking, and sort of like, imagine if it was true. Ooh, what, what would be the result of that, you know, this alternate universe? <laughs> 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 With this past where you can go back and forth from. Um, and we actually kind of didn't think that was going to happen, so we imagined that someone was going to die, and and not the people that we imagined died. But yeah. Um, now, one thing I did occur to me is this does almost seem like a little meditation on uh, the death penalty, right? Um, th this particular episode opens with it reminds you of what happened in the very first episode. Yes, where Henry is in Texas and he's defending a person on death row and he's like you know talking to the jury which is yeah. us essentially the yes. audience you know hey uh, you know how much doubt do you need before you kill someone and that's what you're doing you're going to kill a person you know for me he even says something like I need the word of God to mm. tell me you know stamped that right. I, before I'm going to kill someone uh, how much doubt are you willing to deal with audience yes and so we we see a bit here in episode 10 where Lacey takes out a gun yes and he's pointing it yes. he's like you know what I've wasted all these yes. years my life has uh, my life has been spent tending to this jail and I've missed so many of life experiences having to just look after you yes and I'm waiting for God to tell me something and yes. I'm not hearing it hell with it and so he tries to shoot the kid, uh, whether shooting him would actually have killed him, we'll mm, never know. No, we'll never know. But he doesn't pull the trigger because he doesn't believe in this death penalty idea. <laughs> Jailing someone forever. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Especially if the person is ageless. You're like, I sentence you forever to live in a, a, a tiny little cell. But, um, but right, death listen. penalty is something he's not willing to enact himself. And we see that then transferred to the next jailer is Henry. And the reason Henry doesn't just kill the guy is because he can't. There's doubt. Is this really the devil? Is this really an evil person? I can't make this judgment. Sure. So I'm not going to kill you. Right. Um, and so anyway, there's just that that little through line is, I think, deliberately sprinkled mm. throughout uh, this. Yeah, season. that makes sense. Yeah. Um, now, interesting that, you know, Henry gets arrested for the death of the Odin Branch character, the guy uh, who is the deaf guy. Who oh. Was, and he gets arrested along with the kid, along with his son, Wendell, who heard the voice, heard the sounds, went out to the camper, and then got arrested because he was hanging out in the wrong well, spot. Well, Wendell got hung. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Um, but I think, right. I think they let Wendell go, but they keep, yeah, yeah, yeah. They keep uh, right. Henry. Right. So... Right. The way Henry escapes that situation is yeah. the kid just has everybody kill the cops, the <laughs> prisoners, everybody, and they walk out into the woods where later then the kid disappears because Henry made him disappear. Yeah. And yet somehow one year later, Henry's a he's a practicing attorney. Yes. Hanging out in the I'm like Yes. What did, what did, it's one thing to like somehow not be in jail that's its own problem of like mm. oh yeah you were present when all those guys got murdered and you yeah, were the only yeah. person that survived it's another thing to then get your law license and not have anything revoked no, and no, no, the bar yeah, disciplinary yeah, 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 and you're yeah, like yeah, yeah. practicing law uh, a, little, a little hard to <laughs> believe how he got out of that legal quandary but <laughs> so be it yes. he did nah no must no fuss <laughs> um 
Interesting conversation that happened was uh, Molly sees Ruth about to jump off the mm, bridge again. Yes. She's just, con- just determined to jump off yes, that damn bridge. Yes, yes, Molly tries to stop her. Ruth says, you know what? We've had this conversation many times before. Um, and Molly says, well, you know, in one of those other timelines, you packed your bags and you went and lived happily with Alan Pangborn right. away from here. Right. And Ruth's like, well, you never said that before. Nope. And then we assume that ends the suicide attempt. Yes. Uh, although then it, she dies later. <laughs> We're like, oh, okay. Well, then, what did it help? <laughs> like, right. you saved her so she could die a little later. <laughs> Yay. But, um, but it was just interesting, you know, that also alludes to something that's, whether it's altered dimensions or other timelines. Right. Uh, this, the kid telling Molly his experience changed something. Yes. So that this, oh, we've been here so many times before. This keeps getting replayed. Yes. This is now new. Yes. We're on a different track, yeah. perhaps, mm. due to the kid talking to Molly. Um, I don't know if that means something. Not sure what the soap figurines meant either. Mm. Like, to that warden, it meant, yeah, it's the devil. Only the devil would leave a soap figurine. I feel like it was um, him talking to Molly and uh, was representative of, of perhaps how he, I think it's malevolent what the kid was doing. And I think the kid was, you know, trying to spread his influence or whatever. So he's able to convince Molly of this fake story, you know, and, and he's taking uh, Henry out into the woods. Um, and he pr- I think he probably would have killed Henry. That's what I believe. So, yeah. yeah. So I think that's that's how it was going to. Because also remember, little Henry had the little soap figurine in the first episode when he oh. came back. Mm. So there's if if we go with the devil's a liar thing, he would know that, yeah. and so it would just play off of that idea of like, see, I was you in the other world. I also carved soap figurines. Right. <laughs> right. But I don't know. Anyway. Um, so uh, yeah, that's kind of the uh, the extent yeah. of our episode. I mean, there's plenty of things that we, you could quibble on. You know, certain things that didn't quite line up. For instance, yeah, yeah, yeah. when Henry's in the filter in the soundproof booth, he has visions of yeah, yeah, theoretically yeah, 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 the other world yeah, 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 before yeah. he's told about the other world by mm. the kid. So like, oh, was that just the devil putting that into his brain? Was it the other world? Well. That's the implication because it was like like the jail cell. Yeah, we don't know where he was kept. If if he's not kept there, where was he kept? Right during that time, hmm. was it the Desjardins house where mm. he had the bowl of gruel and a spoon? <laughs> uh, it looked like a different flooring, but whatever. right, right. right. Hmm. Um, mm. So I mean, there are things like that that you know, like oh well, that doesn't line up. But right, uh, you know. So I don't know that any answer we give could l- answer all of tick That's all true. the boxes That's true. at this point I think That's deliberately true. so I think they yeah. set up a situation right. that nothing ticks all the boxes um, but yeah if you have some theories for instance feel free to uh, put them out well, let's yeah. chat about them because um, I you know who are we I don't know yeah, who, I don't <laughs> know who we are either yeah. Um, are we even the real versions of ourselves? Yeah, no, no. I could be telling you a story yeah. that's completely untrue because yeah. uh, I'm, I'm possessing uh, another alternate version of myself. There you go. I'm actually 300 years old. Woo. And, uh, mm. I mean, I look it, but whatever. You don't okay. look a day over 299. Oh, well, thanks, man. Yeah. Uh, so, anyway, that is Castle Rock. Yes. Thank you, Paul. That was Castle Rock. That, that, that was Castle Rock. <laughs> Uh, we're thinking about maybe talking about. There's a new series nice. coming up next week called Maniac. Yes. Uh, with Emma Stone and Jonah Hill. Jonah Hill. <laughs> Not Seth Rogen. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, is it Seth Rogen? Oh, it's Jonah Hill. <laughs> it's Jonah Hill. Anyway, um, it looks in a, like a cool sci fi premise style show on Netflix. Yes. I believe. Um, so if you if you out there like that idea, let us know. If you have another show in mind that you would like us to talk about, Feel free to put that in the comments. Yes. Happy to take suggestions. Uh, But otherwise, uh, thank you, Paul. Yes. Appreciate it. Thank you, Matt. Bye, everybody.